Welcome all gamers to another Mid Sussex YouTube video. You are here with your channel host Sam and today's special guest Alistair. Alistair. Now, I'd probably say you're quite you're like instant royalty. You've been on the GBHL. Nah, no, I'm just general royalty. General royalty. It comes with your surname being king. It, it does. Um so yeah, welcome to Mid Sussex War Gamers. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Pleasure. Um today we are gonna do a tournament review. Um it is the Monday after. Is it a fancy name? Uh, Battle of Four Armies? No, no, it's Mansfield. Mansfield Doubles. doubles. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, yeah, it's the day after the Mansfield Doubles tournament at, um, in Slayer Games in Nottingham. Um, what? Doubles um, basically, it's the first Doubles tournament of the year, is it? Or was there one in Huddersfield? No, that one's coming. No, the one in Huddersfield was just was just for singles. Yeah, so it's the first doubles tournament of it's first doubles tournament for over a year and a half now. Yeah, and so. for the for the league. Yeah. There was no doubles tournaments last year. So um so there were twelve players? Twelve teams. Uh and we all teamed up with our favourite people in the world at the beginning of the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> whether whether they're still our favourite people at the end. Yeah. Yes, you have to wait and find out. Yeah. Um, and it was a thousand points per team, five hundred points each. The only stipulation being it had to be two separate five hundred point armies, so you couldn't you couldn't share points. Um, and but there was only one general. Yeah. And strangely enough, I mean we didn't we didn't do this, but you were actually allowed to choose your general at the start of each game. Really? Yeah. No. In the rules pack, it said at the start of each game you may choose your leader from either force. That's why we should read the rules pack. It should be yeah. Um, to be fair, the rules pack wasn't as easy to find as it sometimes is for... No, normally they just do it on the Facebook page. This is what we do. Yeah. Well, I think what, what the, um, the issue with that rules pack was because they had the event on their page and on the GBHL. The yeah. GBHL page, which everyone looked at, didn't have the link to the rules pack. Yeah, I got confused about which page was the real page. Yeah. No, there was two because we asked to put it on yeah. GBHL. So yeah, it was run by Slayer Games. Um, which is Tom and Tom Robinson and Dan Bird. Um, but Dan did all the work. Well done to you. <laughs> I think Tom was actually playing in that fantasy campaign tournament yeah. that's going on behind us. Um, yeah, so anyway, um, it was a thousand points. Uh, I was teaming up with my very good friend Mark Boyland. Um, we had elves and dwarfs. And he was teaming up with. I teamed up with. Kevin! Yeah. Street. Yes. Uh, and we went with a Fury of the Wild list, so Eagles, Bjorn, Ents and Wizards. Yeah, and it was just, we played a practice game, didn't we, on the yeah. Friday night? Yeah, which uh, I learned, don't listen to Kira. Don't listen to Kira. Yeah. <laughs> did, did that go through the weekend? Well, actually, we'll wait and see. Mm. Um, so yeah, actually, I'm going to sit back now, I don't need to lean forward. Um, yeah, we are in... Uh, <coughs> We travelled back last night, um, yeah, down yeah. in the Wonder Wagon, um, and instead of rushing back to try and get Alistair's train, we um, we stayed over at my house. We thought we'd do a tournament review for you guys while it's still fresh in the memory. Yeah. Um, so let's let's go right back to Friday. So I arrived at Twickenham Station. Yes. I said I was being forward. <coughs> yeah. So. I was at. I went to Damien's Thursday evening because Damien is the awesome driver of the Wonder Wagon. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Damien Elbow of the GBHL, um, host of the Planter, co-host of the Planter. Um, yeah. So I was at Damien's. We had a few practice games, and on the Friday we basically met you and Kieran at Twickenham Station. Yeah. But they were very intrigued by a fox. Yeah. They, they, it. It was just sat there. Yeah. I got in the car. I was like, look, look, a fox. I'm like. We're going to play twice now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, basically. The, the exciting life me and Kieran lead. <laughs> yeah. That's all the excitement of Twickenham. Um, so yeah, we, we all mounted the Wonder Wagon. Yes, but with um, the Triceratops. Yep, and really. if you're on the Facebook page, you would have seen the hideous selfie that I took of all of us in the Wonder Wagon. Damien has about seven chins. Oh yeah. <laughs> like two more than usual. Yeah. Just kidding, mate. <laughs> 
This is why I stand there at my house because you've kicked you out by now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we travelled down to Mansfield. It was a pretty good journey. There was a little bit of traffic. Mm. Um, but I think we arrived at the 281 um, bed and breakfast, what, quarter past six? Yeah, something like that. Well, what did we talk about in the one wagon on the way down? I don't think most of it can be broadcast on a family friendly channel. Uh, we were talking about the FAQs stuff. Yeah, there's a few FAQs. There was a few um, conversations about what happened to Throne of Skulls. There's quite a few puns. Yeah, a lot of puns. Um, I just remember a lot, a lot of Frozen singing. I know we sang at least one song. I don't think as much as usual. No, no, we saved that for the journey back. Yeah, true. Um, so yeah, we we got to Nottingham about half past six, which actually is earlier than we usually do. Mm-hmm. Um, usually we've had to wait for Tom Harrison or Kieran or someone to finish work at six o'clock. And then yeah. we don't get into Nottingham until 11. And you, you kind of miss the, miss the Friday night social. Yeah. Um, but it was quite good to get there. Steve Crow and Jay Finnegan were already there. Yeah, yeah. Um, along with Ed and Sam. Ed Bull, Sam Jeffries. And we... Um, anyone else? I think on that evening it was just um, us who were at the 281. Yeah, eight of us for the yeah. Um, and we went out to the curry house. Um, the Mint, which is usually our Saturday... Mm. Um, oh, usually, usually our Saturday evening but because Daniel Bird was going to be doing a concert on the Saturday as we thought as we thought we decided we'd go there on the Friday yeah but actually it turned out that the concert was on the Friday but he hadn't said anything yeah so we ended up like missing it yeah so we just had curry yeah so we went out for a curry I think Mark joined us about three quarters of the way through and he yeah. walked down a bit curry and then we went off to Slayer for a practice game. Um, that was about what half nine. Yeah. I think we left the we left the Royal Mint. Um, all hopped in cars over to Slayer and had a practice game. Me, myself and Mark played Alistair and Kieran. Um, so that, that was a good idea. Yeah, it was basically because there was only four pairs. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was Damien and Billy played Jay and Steve. Yeah, and then it was basically yeah. Nice be you. Yeah. Uh, um, I think we started about half ten. We won't, we won't talk about the practice games too much, but nah. the gist of it is Slayer closes at 11. At 12. 12 it was it half past 12? Yeah, 12 30. One of the guys comes in going, Are you nearly done? Because I want to close up. And we're like, No, not really. Because <laughs> Owen had bought his dog. Yeah. If you ever see Owen's dog, it does amazing tricks. It does. I've been trying to do tricks with Hallie this morning. She's having none of it. Yeah. It, it it's more intelligent than most people I've met. It's more more intelligent than most people in the hall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hold my hand up there. <laughs> um yeah, beautiful little dog. Um so that that distracted us for about half hour. But yeah, it got to half twelve and there was what four or five of us still in, in Slayer playing doubles. Yeah. Um and then was like, right, we have to call it this turn. But you know, it was good to kind of unwind yeah. with the game. Uh, and remember how to play doubles. Yes. Remember that you actually have to talk to your to your partner and go, yeah. is this a good idea, rather than just going, right, I'm just going to do this, 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 this. Because it, when you when you play doubles, there's one thing I always find slightly harder is you look at the army as a whole. Yeah. It's quite easy to sometimes forget that you've got a partner in crime who's also thinking. Mm. It's very important that you can talk to your partner. Yeah, fortunately, uh, half-time early in the morning, it's only me or Kim thinking, so... Yeah. <laughs> nah, two, yeah. two heads, one brain. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, even even after Slayer closed at half-midnight, you know, we all headed back over to the 281 yeah. to have another drink. So, yeah, that's about where David Reed and... Yes, we met David Reed and Chris Murphy. Yeah. The two, um, two guys from Scotland. So they, really, they had a long journey yeah apparently they left at six did they say and then they didn't yeah, arrive they left at, at one. dawn yeah and arrived at well i think it was six in the evening i think they left at six in the morning was it six in the evening yeah oh yeah they arrived at half one in the morning yeah that's it um which you know kudos to you guys that was that's proper commitment i mean yeah and they're, they're not just they're not like southern scotland no they're, they're, they're proper scotland proper scotland <laughs> well well up in the highlands um you know, sort of stayed up and chatted to them. I think by the time we got to bed, it was what half past three in the morning. Yeah, yeah, because it turns out Damon's now a known regular at the two eight one. 
Yeah. Despite only being there three times in the last few years. Yeah. That must be I'm a regular. Yeah, but I think it's mainly because Damon's the one who but sits in the bar until two thirty in the morning every time. Put a lot puts lots of money in there till. Yeah. Um so yeah, Damien oh, he was also filming um the Palan Tour. Oh yeah. Um which is gonna be very exciting to watch. Yeah, he's got some incredible guests on there. He has. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thought the Triceratops was quite a good guest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Billy really doesn't like it when you call him that. <laughs> <laughs> touche, touche. Um, so yeah, I think I went up about half three and then I assume everyone else followed uh, shortly after. Um, yeah. Fast forward about so seven hours. Yeah, so it now is 8.30 in the morning. 8.30 in the morning, Saturday morning, bright and early, it's freezing cold. Yeah, we're, we're all raring to go. And what did the tote one give us? Cook breakfast. Yeah. Oh, yes. So, so we turn up in drips and drabs. Yeah. Um, yeah, we got a taxi over, didn't we? Or you or went with David. I went with David. And we got a taxi. Because, um, as you probably just heard, O'Byrne likes a drink. Yeah, especially at a tournament. And he didn't want to take his car. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we all piled into various automobiles and um, arrived... Arrived at Slayer for about, it was about quarter to ten, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I have no idea what the time is. Yeah. It started off so well and then just slowly overran. But the first game was about ten o'clock. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, who did you play first game? I played Damien and Billy. Oh, sorry, I should say we played. Mm. Did myself and Mark were playing Billy and Damien and Bern. Um They had a army very close to my heart, which was a... Uh, Battle of Dimwall Dale themed dwarf army. So it was Thraw, Thrain, Thorin, Dwalin, Balin, and then Grimhammers and Warriors of Erebor. Um, looked fantastic. Um, yeah. They would have been painting Thraw, Thrain, and Thorin, especially for it. Um, he does a good job. If you've watched his hobby blog, you'll, you'll have seen um, Thraw and Thrain, and hopefully you'll be seeing Thorin on yeah. today's one. If he's filmed one. Yeah. Because he, fin he finished him on. Friday morning, he was like, "Hang on, you can't, you can't film this video yet because I'm just painting." Sorry, yeah, he finished it quite early, considering yeah. tournament usual. Yeah, I was expecting him to whack a couple of paints in. That's right. Did all of us have our armies finished before yes. the Friday evening? Yes, that's a first. That is a first. <laughs> yeah, I've, the latest I've ever been up in army is the Friday before a throne of skulls. But I wasn't actually painting it. I had a friend painting it for me. The, the latest I've done was at a Warhammer Throne of Skulls, yeah. in which I'd kind of my local GW didn't have one model that I needed, oh. so I ended up having to buy it from Warhammer World Shop when it yeah. opened at nine o'clock. And bearing in mind the first game is nine o'clock, oh, so I was sat there for the first turn, painting this mo building <laughs> and painting this model while playing a game. Fantastic, um, and I got it done. And it doesn't look terrible on like a board. Yeah. But when you look up close, you can tell I wasn't waiting for any of the paints to dry or anything like that. Was that the? Is that when wet blending? Oh yeah, yeah, no, it's a. You know, it's going with that mash of colours. Yeah. Um, actually, I don't think we said what my army is yet. <laughs> Hang on, I need a drink. I'll be right back. <coughs> and we're back. I've only been talking for fifteen minutes. My mouth is already dry. Yeah. Um. For reasons we'll explain later. Yeah, yeah. Um, where were we? Uh, yes, my army. Um, so <coughs> before we go, I think we've got before we go any further off. From my army, so my half was basically Mirkwood, um, Mirkwood slash New Mirkwood slash uh, La Florian. So I had um, Legless Greenleaf leading uh, with cloak and armor, as you do, leading eight Wood Elf spearmen and four Wood Elves with bows. Um, I had the Desolation of Smaug Thranduil, so the newer... Fight 7? No. No. The old one. Fight the, 6? Yeah, the Fight 6 to attack one with the Circle of Kings, but he just had armour, so 85 point Thranduil. Leading 6 Mirkwood um, Elves with Glaives, and 3 Mirkwood Elves with uh, Bow and Glaive. And I then had a Lorien Stormcrawler with 4 Guards of Glaive and Corp. Um, and Mark's half of the army was 
Thorin Open Shield with Orkrist and the Open Shield. He had Dwalin, Champion of Erebor, and he had Balin, Son of Thundin, with eight Khazar Guard and a banner. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Thorin had seven Warriors of Erebor. It was seven or eight. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was our army. His forward looked cool. Mm. Uh, his, his Thorin was basically a converted king under the mountain. So he was fully armoured and then he converted him to give him the Open Shield and Orkrist. Um, which looked amazing, and as he does, he painted it um, beautifully. Mm. Um, and kind of the premise behind the army was basically he had the front rank, and I had the you know the back rank and channel uh, terrified or, or dismay from Flying Bill, and then basically try and get some nature's wraths off um, with the, with Stormcaller and Flying Bill. Um, so we had a little bit of shooting. Um, so first game. Uh, was Damien and Billy with all their warriors variable and they had no ranged. And the first one was hold ground. Uh, yes. Yes. Random deployment. It, random deployment. Yeah, because that really hurt us. Um, did we get priority? Yeah, we we got priority, so we had to set up first, um, and everyone, I think, Thranduil, Legolas, and Thorin. We all got to pick, or the, well, they all come on where we got to pick. Um, Dwalin and the Stormcaller both had to use might to knock it down to a one, because mm. otherwise they were being put in you know, random corners. Um, and I know then when Billy and Damien deployed, they got in, they got to put everything where they wanted. Um, so I, I, all myself and Mark's forces that we had were down kind of on this table edge here. Right, cool. This is my house. If you, if you feel the need. Do you know where Damien and Billy stuff was? Uh, yeah, it was kind of up the top here and down. That's the that like top corner, yeah. That's hand gestures. Um, and obviously then you had the, the point in the middle. Um, first turn, everything was out range, so not a lot happened. Um, second turn, we got priority, so everything moved up. Thranduil, Channel, uh, Aura of Dismay. Um, the elves moved up half along with Legolas and then roll for the Stormcaller rolls the two Damien Billy gets to place him now Dwalin at this point is here on this edge with so just on my shoulder yeah just on just on Alice's shoulder with two warbands of Erebor Dwarves so they place the Stormcaller behind him now in hindsight what we should have done is run on and nature graph yeah, that would probably have been the good idea in hindsight. Yeah, I didn't do that. But I don't think it even crossed our mind until after the Stormcaller died. Um, but I kind of we moved them on, left them out of charge range for that turn, and then put the pikes in support so we could kind of wiggle them out if we had to to not mm -hmm. trap them, forgetting the Grim Hammers have throwing weapons. Um, that's why you take Grim Hammers. Not that's Kazagard. why you take Grim Hammers, not Kazad Guard. Um, I think we then we rolled for the wall and he rolled a three, so we used another might point to bring one with the rest of the army down at the bottom. Um, and yeah, in the shooting phase, they threw six grim throwing weapons. So they killed one. They might have killed one. Um, might have killed one dude. Yeah, I know Damien was lethal with his grim hammer. Yeah, the grim hammers work from what I've heard. Basically, Billy can do it, and then Dane would just go, this is how you do it. Five, six, six. five, six, yeah. And wound a person. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, while Dwalin and my Stormcaller were duking it out, um, obviously all their army was advanced into the middle, and we kind of picked, we was on the wrong side of the board, because basically there's a big hill just off the middle, mm -hmm. then with a hedge, and we kind of had to go through this hedge to get to the middle, or round the hill, whereas they could come straight down they formed a nice line and there was a few turns where we both kind of inched forward no one really wanted to give up their defensive position um, and in the end they did or they decided to charge and that's when terrifying aura paid off or mm -hmm. aura dismay um, yeah. I think the first turn they failed five or six courage tests which because they had grim hammers not cassid <laughs> because yeah because they had grim hammers <laughs> well actually to be fair most of the grim hammers were over yeah they they only had a few. Oh, hello, Ali. 
you know what I mean? Our you special can... guest appearance. Yeah, special guest appearance again from Hallie, who's interrupting. Um, in your bed. Go on. Sit down. Good girl. Sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that was slightly annoying because we'd kind of sent Thorin, Dwalin and Thranduil through this little gap. Um, just kind of thought, you know, form a line defend it and then Balin, Son of Fundin and the Wood Elf Warriors were basically coming round the hill to try and wheel but because we had archers there as well they probably didn't go as fast as they probably should have because mm -hmm. they were kind of staying back to give the archers good line of sight and to be fair in over three or four turns the archers got about six or seven kills you know so that they were thinning them down but again hindsight you probably should have just got them around quicker um because then, obviously, when the archers then stopped killing, um, there was, you know, they basically fortified the middle. They had Thrain, who was on full health because he'd not really done a lot, just kind of sitting there. Um, both Thorins were out. Um, did Thorin die? I think he went down in the last turn. Thranduil died. He was he got thrawed in the face, which was quite ironic. Um, Dwalin, did Dwalin get killed? Dwalin what? always gets killed. Yeah, I think Dwalin got killed by Thorin in the end. Because um, we contemplated sending Legolas in to help him and then just decided to kill troops. Um, but yeah, it was a, it, it, there was a lot of stalemates. I think there Dwalin failed spectacularly. He um, he ran into two cans of guard and probably got smashed in the face. Um, lost the wound. Um, we basically we tied him up with elves, parrying. Um, weren't rolling many sixes with Dwalin. With everybody else they were. We had a lot of tied fights. Um, but they did they did the thing that you know you should do in a fan hole brand is they then put all their dudes, so they had two lines, six inches away from the objective. Mm -hmm. So if they lost, they were pushed further in towards it. And if oh, yeah. if they won, they then pushed us out. Um, and obviously defence seven with strength even strength four of the Kazads is incredibly hard to crack. Um, and despite Barlin's repeated heroic combats, we couldn't quite cut a hole through. Um, and I think in the end we lost 12-9. Because um, the final turn we managed to kill a few and stuck a few people on. And we had this great plan of Barlin heroic combating. And then he, he had some two guys and he managed to kill one. And without them, then if he hadn't combated he could have killed the other one. So, yeah. Um, I think we lost that one. A point or two points there um, but neither of us were broken I don't think we hadn't hurt their leader they might have hurt Thorin um, but yeah I think it ended 12-9 to Damien and Billy we, you know me and Mark were you know we weren't too dis we weren't too disappointed because A Damien and Billy were quite good yeah well and Billy uh, no matter the result of the tournament is going to become the league leader yes he did win JT's event um, so yeah you know it was it was a close game. It was one of those ones where, you know, maybe um, the Stormcaller should have natured Wrath as soon as he came on. And I think they resisted Thranduil. Um, we were kind of hoping to draw some might from them. And they used Thraw and rolled all three of his will and got the six. Which, as much as he used all his will points, he's fearless. Yeah. So he doesn't actually need them. was hoping to draw at least a might out of him to stop him striking. Um, but yeah, you know, we, we we was pleased with how the army had worked. We was a little bit annoyed that we had kind of hung back a little bit with um, Barlin. Um, but you know, first game, uh, yeah, first game, close game. Unfortunately, a loss. But we mm. go on to play uh, bigger and better games. Yeah. Your first game. Actually, I'll do the army break. Then, yeah. So, uh, as some may or may not be known. I like eagles. Yeah. Um, so when it came to writing an army list, Kieran came up with all these really cool ideas. And White I, Council, I think he put past me. Yeah. Was it that he was really keen on taking the White Council. And I said, I'm taking eagles. Yeah, it doesn't have an eagle <laughs> in it. I'm not playing. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, and I was also very keen to try out Radagast on Great Eagle. Yeah. So... It's the first tournament I've done this year. Have we seen him at any tournaments? 
No. Have we seen uh, Radagast and Eagle at tournaments yet? No. Partly because he's only been out two weeks. Yeah. Two, three weeks. Um, and a lot of people don't like the model. Yeah. Um, they think, well... Um, Actually, it's not that they don't necessarily like the model. It's just the model is the Slay Radagast. With the plastic, plastic eagle, just yeah. made fine cast. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's justified criticism, but it, yeah. people either haven't bought it and painted it or converted one yet. Yeah. Except for you-ish. Kind of. Kind of. Uh, as you may see in another video. Yes. Um, so, yeah. So, I really wanted to try him out. Yeah. Uh, so, I took him, and then I took a great eagle, and Bjorn as my 500 points. Yep. Uh, which... Like three models, don't have much to think about. <laughs> uh, and then Kieran uh, took Treebeard. Yep. And then and Gandalf on Shadow Fax in the end. So he only had three models <laughs> to keep it nice and simple. Three um, models each. Yeah. Um, to do our sort of Fury of the Wild list. Yep. Uh, which we realised only having six models at the end of the first day. May have not been the best choice. <laughs> Although you'll probably work out why. Yeah. So, um, first game, we ended up drawing uh, Steve and Jay. Well, uh, they had a Lake Town horde, didn't they? Yeah, so they had Lake Town militia, some of the new elves. Yeah, um, Jay had Lake Town. Yeah. And Steve had so the, I think, the new Mirkwood. I think Jay had Lake Town, Alfred. Yeah, yeah. He had Alfred with four um, Lake Town Guard. Yeah, and then, um, was it, and then it was just captains cap with militia. Yeah, so he had two or three captains. I think two militia captains. I think he said he had thirty-three militia. I was maybe it was three. And then probably three captains. Yeah, Alfred, four guard. Gandalf, I can't remember who they had. A Gandalf they had, today. Yeah, they had Gandalf. Um, and then they had New Flangel. Yeah. On, uh, on Elk. Yeah. Steve done a wonderful conversion. Yeah, you may have seen it on the Facebook page. Yeah. Um, was it old or new Legolas? New. The new Legolas? Yeah, because um, James Baldwin of Easy yeah, Seal painted Legolas, it. Yeah. Painted it up for him. So, yeah, new Legolas um, and some elves. Oh. Mirkwood. Yeah. Yeah, glaive. I think he predominantly had glaives and bows. Yeah. Didn't see many shields. I didn't get much chance to look around at the armies because it was because it overran so much. It was like yeah, it was a weird thing. It's like at the beginning of the weekend, there were certain people that you said hello to when they arrived. Yeah, and then the only other time I ended up speaking to them was to <laughs> say goodbye. Yeah, um, which is a weird sort of tournament considering there was only twenty four of us. Yeah, yeah. Norm normally a twenty four singles tournament, you'll chat to everybody, mm. but I think the combination of thousand point doubles. And long games and short breaks, you just kind of... Yeah, and no one likes us. So. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Wow. I have plenty of conversations. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, yeah, that was their army. Yep. Um, so it was random... Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I was going to say, we already said it's whole ground. Yeah. Yeah, random deployment. Um, we won the world off to come first. When I say one, I feel like it's more of a... Lost to win the roll off in that scenario. Yeah, you don't want to win priority first turn on. Uh, on so, saying that, all our army came on the bottom left hand corner, apart from Bjorn, who was placed there. All the way, so opposite corners. Yeah. Um, and then all of their army, I think they used might from one or two of the captains to. Bring it on there. So basically, they had a normal looking deployment at the top. Yeah. We were in the corner and beyond there. Uh, I think the elves were there. So Legless Vangel yeah. and all that. And then there was Lake Town there. So, uh, first couple of turns essentially involved our oh, armies going like do 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 do. Yeah. Um, so Lake Town were going down. Uh, the elves were coming round essentially to try and kill Bjorn before he could link up with the others. Yeah. Did he get into a bear quite early on? Uh, turn two. Turn two. That's all right then. Yeah. So basically, first turn he Even couldn't shoot me. Yeah. Second turn he turned into a bear. That's good. Um, although while all this was happening, the lovely, um, friendly, fluffy player Steve Crow, 
showed how he's been corrupted over the years <laughs> and um, was using Alfred to full effect. I was saying that it's quite funny. Uh, Alfred managed to steal all three of Gandalf's might, so he ended up having three might. Yeah. But then Gandalf was strengthening Will Alfred. Oh. And Steve, what are you doing? And basically, he then went and rolled a six uh, and gave Gandalf three points of might back. So, um, yeah, he. Out, I think that's the first time I've ever played anyone who's actually done a strength and will, Alfred. At the yeah. thousand points Mansfield they did last year. Um, well, I personally played. Oh, well, I would yeah. say Jay, pay to win Jay. Mm. Um, did first turn he gave Gandalf a might point. Then Gandalf immediately heroic channeled um, Sapwell, strength and will back on Alfred and then gave him even more might points. I mean, you'll never catch me using Alfred and Gandalf. Oh, no, never. <laughs> Not anymore. Yeah. I was saying that, I'd never actually strength and will with Alfred. No. I think we, I did the other day in a doubles game I played against Justin and Rick. But that was just because we needed some more white points. <laughs> uh, <laughs> why not? But yeah, so um, it, it started to look like we had a, well, they had a lot of might. Um, yeah, they, might, so they would have had a lot already, wouldn't they? Mm. Three captains, six, Alfred with three, nine, yeah. Gandalf with three, twelve, and whatever Thranduil and Legolas had. So um, the first actual, we were kind of be the Ents were bobbing along. Yeah. Uh, the Eagles were rushing across to help out uh, Bjorn. Yeah. Because Bjorn was being chased down behind, so there's a building there. Yeah. And then Thranduil and Legolas were coming along <laughs> uh, with a couple of help guys. Uh, I think there Gandalf and Alfred were there as well. Yep. So um, the first combat that we actually had was uh, Radagar, Strong Eagle and Great Eagle charged into a random Lake Town militia guy in the middle. Yeah. Her at combat. And this is where the actual... Because Alfred was hid behind a building. Yeah. And because... It, uh, Radagast special will mean he doesn't need line of sight oh, like fell wow. walks so it meant that after the hurt combat I could jump on fly over the building and kill Alfred very very nice which everyone cheered to and yeah all that um, and then so we basically ended up having the eagle Radagast and Bjorn uh, Bjorn had been charged by Fangel yeah uh Managed to, ma we both were struck, I think. Yeah. Uh, and I think, yeah, we managed to basically get Fangel to use all his might in one or two turns. That's handy. Yeah. Especially with really. Alfred dead, not to give it yeah. back. So that was cool. Um, the Ents, and that basically just started going towards the middle while his late town guys were coming in. Yeah. And it, it was a case of the Ents were just throwing people around. Yeah. Uh, when Kieran didn't roll a one or two on three dice. Um, yeah, how many times did he bosh, in essence? Well, there's a reason I don't have much of a, a voice left this weekend. <laughs> yeah, that's just I'm going, Kieran! Sure, that's not from the oh, you know, karaoke that, that, in the car. That just, just ended it. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, no, so that, and then we had basically, my and Kieran's plan at the time was, Although I don't know if I actually told Kieran this. This is why you communicate. Yeah, it was uh, basically because they had pretty much all of our all their heroes in this corner away yeah. from the objective, and they only had the Lake Town captains up there. Was if the Ents could kill the captains and break the army before the, the, the Elven he heroes, Elven heroes uh, could get back. Although we were hoping we'd be able to kill them with the Eagles. Yeah. Then the Lake Town guys would all run away and we could win. Did they? Kinda. <laughs> so we managed to kill most of the Lake Town you know, captains. Yep. Uh, which there was no hurting on there. And um, we pretty much completely exhausted them of might in the bottom right hand corner. Yeah. Uh, can't remember. Uh, Radagast and the Eagle died. At some oh, this was the one point in the tournament, actually, where me and Kevin had a disagreement. <laughs> oh, do tell. 
Yeah, so um, basically Radagast was there. I think his eagles had just been killed the time previous. Yep. Um, and he'd been charged by various people. Mm. I don't think any characters. And uh, Just troops. Yeah. And I basically... Because Gandalf was enraged to come and help him out. And I said to Kieran, help me out. <laughs> and he went, no. Because uh, he was worried about the next turn, Gandalf, who was our general, being just pounced on and killed. Yeah. Which is a, a valid... Yeah, no. A valid He's point. wrong, but... <laughs> 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 you know, and I was there going, if you position him here, basically it was there going, they won't get any characters on you. Yeah. So you won't die. Uh there's also just come down to the 50 50 all of so you can tell it and read it. Yeah. Um, in the end, because Gandalf was in Kieran's part of the army, I, I, I uh, let him do what he wanted with it. Yeah. So promptly Radagast died. Kieran. <laughs> 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 yeah, Kieran. But um, yeah, so basically that flank died. It died on the same turn, I think. As we managed to break, so Bjorn had actually joined the Ents in the middle. Yeah. So we basically had those guys just smashing. Yeah, Hulk smashing everything. So we managed to break them, but um, so they had they were broken, but unfortunately, they managed to get the elves had just come close enough that oh. they could cover enough of their guys with stand fast. Yeah. And that was in there. Yeah, is that my? What was I saying? Yeah, yeah, Mac, yeah, uh, the elves got near to the middle and started yeah. to stand fast at Lake Town. Yeah, so they all passed their courage tests. And I can't remember, I think it was at this point they came along and said that we were out of time. Yeah. So that was the last turn. Um, so we ended up losing 2012 because enough of them didn't run away. Yeah. Um, it would have been quite interesting to see how that game would have gone on. If you'd had an extra turn. Yeah, because they were out of might, so we were pretty much always going to have, against their heroes, yep. the fight value advantage. Um, and we still had Gandalf. I think, did we kill their Gandalf? I think at some point we killed their Gandalf. Yep. Um, so we got general points. For that. Yeah, if you'd have got 12, you would have had needed yeah, so we break, break leader. Yeah. Broke them, killed them. Oh no, we got eight, sorry, not twelve. Oh. So yeah, break, kill that leader, and two models. Two models in the middle. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, but yeah, no. So yeah, we lost that game. It was a really good game. Yeah. Uh, Steve and Jay are always great guys to play against, even when they are cheesing up their list. Yeah. Um, although they can get away with it just being a bit. It, it's still got an idea of fluff. It it is it is, themed. Yeah. The army itself is themed, although they should really have had Bard in there. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, it, it's... You don't look at it and go... That's disgusting, it's only when they start. Yeah, it's only when you go, oh wait, that is disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, it is. But, uh, you know, so we lost that game, um, which I'm slightly disappointed about because if it was kind of more one of those ones because of where it ran out of time when it ended. It's kind of like... Yeah. It had the, how the game could have gone. Yeah, you think if you have that 10 minute warning mm. that said the game will end in 10 minutes, then you, yeah. you'll, you'll play it different and you'll move to. Yeah. Which was quite key in our next game. Yes, so game two, uh, we had, we played each other, don't we? Yeah, well, we, we, we got a terrible draw of opponents. I mean. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we got a right bunch of um, unsporting people. Yeah. Yes, game two. Myself and Mark were drawn against Alistair and Kieran. Yeah. Um, I don't think this, is ever, this has ever happened in a tournament with you, where two people doing it. I think maybe the first one that one of the first ones done it was Jamie versus James, but oh, that yeah. but that wasn't a, that was a non-game event. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So we had to play each other. Yeah. Um, obviously, the practice game, uh, myself and Mark had won because it was to the death, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, and. If we'd won it five four, yeah, because I got too obsessed with hugging. Yeah, people. basically, we me and Ki- Kieran convinced me on the practice game that because we're not really gonna hug with Bjorn at the weekend. Yeah, we may as well do it in a practice game. Yeah, and I found out why you don't hug. Yeah, especially on models with fake points. Yeah, 
Yeah, he tried to hug Dwalin and Dwalin just... He, he accepted the hug and hugged you back. No, I think it's more Dwalin doesn't like cuddly hugs. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't come across as... He, he, he just gave me the cold shoulder. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we had to play each other and it was reconnoiter. So um, how many models did you have? 47. And I had... Me and Kieran had six. Yeah, although seven if you dismounted. Random yeah, so you can do it that way. Yeah. Um, so me and Mark... Should win. Should win. Um, well, in 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 yeah, you, general, if you're just looking at it. If yeah. you look at it, you think, right, well, we got... Our magic number to get off the board, I think, was 10. Mm. Um, hello, Hallie. Join. Come back in. Um, yeah, so our magic number was 10, because we kind of thought that you would probably get Thorin. Um, so that would give you three. Yeah. And then you'd probably break us three for that. And then if you got everything else off... Six, six, seven, twelve, eleven, twelve. All right. My, my magic number. You know, we thought if we got ten off. They had a magic number which was wrong. Yeah, we had, <laughs> we had a magic number between seven and fifteen that was yeah. changing as the game went on. But basically, we kind of knew that we wanted to get Thorin off. Um, to obviously deny you the leader, and we kind of spread out. So we can't. So we had the bottom table edge. I was going to say it's the top table edge. <laughs> From where, I, from where we, we was on our table edge down here. Yeah. That's when Kieran up here. And we kind of had Thorin and uh, well, actually, Barlin. We won priority first, didn't we? Yeah, uh, we had it. We rolled No, because that's why we all had to go in the middle. No. It's freaking right, sir. Yeah. So you move on? Yes. So we moved on first and then you... Yes, that, yes that's true. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. So this there. is another scenario where you don't want to win priority first no. then. So basically, because me and Kieran got priority... You we guess. Can, yeah, so we basically had to put everyone in the middle mm. and just go, I basically yeah. plan for turn. all, plan plan for all um all yeah, eventualities. Sure. Yeah. Um, so what, what 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 we did do, we'll come on to what we should have done um, later, is we kind of had Thorin, Dwalin, no Thorin, Barlin, and the a few Wood Elves. Oh, I think it was the Stormcaller down in this corner. Yeah, that that was our. That was yeah, our breakthrough. Cool. Yes, that that was our. This bunch are going to get off the board. Yeah, and then we had Leggy and Thranduil and Dwalin kind of it around the middle, um, as a look at me on a target, um, and ba basically, did we march first turn? March, march second turn. Um, we then started to shoot straight up. Mm. I don't. I think we just did normal aura of dismay because we figured with such high courage it wouldn't make a difference. Yeah. Um, so yeah, started moving up. I think Bayon, he he comes. Did so Bayon turn in the bear second turn? It might be third turn. Yeah. He, uh, I'm, I'm vibrating. Vibrating. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So Bayon starts to kind of come, you know, towards Thorin. Yeah. Um, obviously, because you know, big bear block, you know, can block. So I think there's a house. Yeah, there's a house there, so you couldn't just go like that. You yeah. had to either go Come that forward way. and then back round, or, or yeah, kind of round the house. Um, so, so yeah, we we was basically aiming for the gap, mm. um, and we, we you know we had a lot of models and a lot of tough models. Yeah, um, the eagles were coming down the middle. Yeah, well the eagles, eagles. the plan, mine, Kieran's plan was yep. the eagles jump on and because you had to, your wood elves and and that yeah there. You were the most squishy of your army. Yeah. Because so, we knew we basically had to break you and try yeah. and get you below 25% before you could get some off. Yeah. So uh, they jumped up there, killed Frangel quite early. Yeah, you, did you hear out com Yeah. I, no, you went into him and you called her out combat. And yeah. then that's when I said to Mark, I'm, they're going to go on leggy. So I strike with leggy. You went, no, nah, I don't bother. <laughs> and then you heard combated into leggy, which, to be fair, I don't. I don't know if it was the best choice, but no, because you then that that was just did I yeah no it was, I it was the most of it yeah you basically had you charged the eagle and um, Raddy or the eagle into Thranduil when he was immobilized, um, and then Hurak right, combated the eagle into Leggy, and then Radagast stayed around there and had some elves. Yeah, so oh, no, no, it was the other way around. Yeah, no, Radagast had one down because we basically managed to kill Thranduil. You killed Thranduil early on, which we expected. Yeah. Um, and then they held, held some elves. 
Yeah, we killed we killed most of the, that group of elves with a hell. No, because there was like five of us. There were there were six glaives, and yeah. four made it, but then got up the next turn and ran away. And I, I thought those ones already ran away. Oh, I, I, I might have been basically we killed some elves. Yeah, some elves died. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'm annoyingly Radagast then went and fluffed his horse completely when he was like, wet, jumped onto Legless. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't. We was in two minds whether to hurt, punch the eagle or to punch Radagast. I think each turn we did something different, whereas if we just focused on either or. Mm. I think you generally went for the eagle. Yeah, because we wanted to get rid of the, the bonus of, mm. you know, knocking over. Um, yeah, so. Um, did Treebeard ever get into the middle? Or did he. No, Treebeard was going to. So basically, at this point, because. The Ents don't like being hasty. No. They, they were hanging around in the middle doing bugger all. Because yeah. <laughs> um, actually me and Kim were stuck with a massive conundrum because our army was doing this, kind yeah. of. And it was there going, there was a runaway group of four or five elves. Yeah. Probably a bit more than that, actually. Then. Yeah, there was four glaives and three bows. Yeah, so there. Going this way. Then we had our Ents in the middle and it was there going, do we send them that way to deal with to stop them getting forward or do we send them sort of into the middle yeah because well, we, we, like. we Thorin's runaway group of him a few Kazaz a few Warriors of Erebor and the Stormcaller had kind of made a break for it and then Balin basically everything else had then wheeled around because that's where the Ents were yeah um, and the Eagles to then try and get some kills to hold you up and the Soviet getting into Thorin basically yeah um, kind of works and also you'd put Gandalf in quite an open position within range of Dwalin, champion of Erebor. Yeah, I'm blaming Kieran on that one. Yeah. <laughs> However, <laughs> there. He, he, didn't, he didn't go down nearly as quickly as yeah, we basically, he thought he would. We kept on immobilising Dwalin or hurling people into him. And stuff yeah, like we that. wasted a lot of might on heroic combats to, to try and do Gandalf first to stop and then hurling someone into Dwalin. Yeah. Um, Eventually, you, you managed to break free, didn't you? We ran out of might and you got the all right, move off, and Gandalf ran away. Oh yeah, um, yeah. That, uh, we decided in the end that we sent Radagast after the runaway group. Yeah, of the because he was the quickest and <laughs> was also most reliable the killer. Yeah, because um, normal eagle with two attacks and not locked down, you can't rely on him there. Um, so he was fine down there. Bjorn at this point had engaged Thorin and Thorin's Go. group. Yep, and yeah. there was that one turn, wasn't there? Where we both heroic strike up to ten. Yeah. Uh, Bjorn was surrounded. He was surrounded with Kazads who were piercing striking. Yeah. And I think one had gone two handed. Basically, if I think, I think it's fair to say, if we had won that roll off, Bjorn was likely to. Or if we if we was going to win the roll off, Bjorn was going to take some punishment. Yeah. Um, that was your priorities. You got to roll it. So yeah, because he has an elven blade. Thorin has the elven blade, so we were winning on a one to four because we were evil. Yeah, somehow, uh, and literally, what you threw the dice? I threw the dice and, and ran, ran away. away. Um, <laughs> and to which point, Kieran screamed. We, me and Kieran both screamed as it landed on six. So no, I, I didn't. I still didn't know who. What who was. Won it. <laughs> but um, yeah, so Bayon was able to win that. Although probably fairly in a sense, I we decided that would hell for him. Yeah. Just because for him, I'd only use one point of might at this point. Yeah. Just to get him out of the way so he can use his heroic strike for the next couple of turns. Yeah, and I think also, I think I might have heard that you wanted him away from the board edge. So then he was, because yeah. he, he was he was more on your half of the table than he was on ours. Yeah. So he was slowly getting there and you held him back. Yeah. I was hoping that we were going to wound him as well. Yeah. But that didn't happen. But because everyone had gone past him, I think you only hit his spear support. Yeah, like and then two people. Yeah. So Thorin survived, which was lucky for us. Um, because obviously being the general he gives away points if you wound him yeah um, Gandalf was able to survive two turns of combat against Dwalin because easy doing that Dwalin's rubbish <laughs> mobilised <laughs> Dwalin is rubbish oh, uh, yeah. Kieran had a knack of picking up one dice oh, to fight yeah. six Gandalf against six six I'm not going to lie this happened all tournament yeah uh, which is why yeah they don't they don't but, no, no. so well, Bjorn, though, for the next few turns, fluffed his rolls quite Yeah, a bit. We, um, we then sent Warriors of Everyone and just shielded against him. So yeah. he was always getting six or seven dice. 
So basically, it, I normally see those as 50-50s when you've got three dice. It's like, yeah. either I'll roll a six or not. Yeah. Um, turns out that I didn't more often yeah, than not. Yeah, more often than not, you rolled. Because that fight failed, actually. That one we were just talking about, you had to use all your might, didn't you? Yeah. Because there was a there Because I pause. only rolled a five, didn't I? No, it was a four. Was it a four? And yeah. you was debating whether or not to use two. And you wanted to check with Kieran, who had... Oh, yeah, Kieran had... Uh, had disappeared. Yeah, he, he, he went into the void of the... Uh, the Slayer, Lou, and hadn't returned for about ten minutes. And I think, as he came out, you decided to use two might points. Yeah. So, you was always... After that, it was typical, you was always running the five highest. Mm. And obviously, with Shield and Gord, was able to get the six. Yeah. Um, yeah. My main thing was they're going to want to keep him alive. Yeah. It did look like he would probably die. Yeah. Um... We was able to kill Yent in the middle eventually. Managed to get Barlin on him and some the rest of the Kazads and some warriors of Airborne Piss and struck up. Was it not before he managed to drain all your might? Yeah, he, yeah, he dra- drained all our might points. Um, I think he didn't have any. Le- no one had any left by the end of the game. Did but you ki- he killed the eagle as well, didn't he? We, yeah, Leggy and the Wood Elves had killed the eagle because there was that one turn okay. where Radagast dropped a Nature's Wrath, yeah. which we resisted. And then the next turn, you then sent him off to go and deal with the runaway group. Yeah. Because um, there, there was that one turn where we had Radagast surrounded. We had Gandalf not surrounded, but with lots of people on. And then we had the end kind of surrounded and Bayon. And it all kind of went... The difference is Radagast. It kind of, <laughs> it kind of went mostly your way. Because yeah. we, I did, in an ideal world, we would have won and killed all the, in all those combats. That was, here's, here's the basket, here's our eggs. We're all going to go in this. Mm. Um, and then obviously Radagast flew off, which kind of helped us because it then freed up everyone who he had not killed Yeah. to then jump on the end. But we did need him. You did, yeah. And obviously if you hadn't flown him away, we those elves would have got off the board. Yeah. Um, so yeah, by this point, Trevid had managed to make it. Yeah, he was just past the house up in this corner where yeah. there was... There was about five dwarves and a few elves and, a, and yeah. the stormcaller. Yeah, the stormcaller got held backwards. Yeah, um, it, it, it was weird because it was a case of do we try and kill them, kill guys, or do we just hurl them away from the board? Or do we edge? just make sure they're not getting to the board edge? Yeah. Um, in retrospect, should have killed them. we should have killed them, but not necessarily because of that's the better view for the game. Yeah, it was more of a time issue. Yeah, so it's getting. It's getting around the two hour mark. Legolas has been wounding Gandalf quite a bit. Le- Legolas, Gandalf at this point is down to one, one wound, no fate. His horse is gone. Oh, yeah, never get Kieran to roll fate for Gandalf. No. Leggy is hiding behind a rock, basically. He's looking through his rock at Gandalf and is also hitting him. Um, at a mite. Uh, we've got an elf on the board edge. Yeah. Or within range of getting off. We've got a dwarf within range of getting off. Um, and there was a Galadrim caught guard who had been killed by Treebid who had been yeah. arranging off. And basically, what was the last turn? Yeah, we won the priority. If we got priority, we won it quite easily because we could still do it though, in theory. Yes, but we, you know, yeah. these two models went off, um, and obviously we'd also Thorin had taken a back seat and was resting inside the house because yeah. we thought we don't want to give away. Leader points. The Ent was dead. The Eagle was dead. Uh, Bayon was dead. We had to kill one more to break you. Obviously, kill your leader. Mm. Um, so our plan for this last turn, or we didn't know it was the last turn, but our plan for this turn was win priority, get him off, kill Gandalf or Legolas, because yeah. we also had a few Wood Elf archers scattered around who were also taking shots at him. Um, you win priority. Yeah, at this point I thought we needed to kill three models. Yes, yeah, so we were two models off breaking. Although I thought it was three. <laughs> I just thought it was three. Um, but no, um, so... Valley charges the elf, which is about to run off the board. Yep. Treebeard charges the dwarf, dwarf, which is about to run off the board. And Gandalf runs away. And casts his blinding light. Yeah. Which properly saved him. Mm. Yeah. Um, then... So, shooting face, I've got... One, two, three, four archers. All shoot Gandalf. Obviously, without blinding light, they all hit. But yeah, because yeah. blinding light, no sixes. So it comes down to Legolas. Yeah. Now, all we need is one five, and we get six points. Because we break them, kill the leader. Um, so I have, like, me and Mark, I think we had a quick discussion. Should we go for the triple shot? 
or do we go for the auto hit? We decided the on the auto hit. hit. So yeah, I was like, what? We only need a five. Otherwise, we've got to roll sixes and then fives. Roll it. Failed to win. I think it was a three or four. Yeah. Like, damn it, that could have just cost us the game. But we got one point because Gandalf's been wounded. Yeah. Combat phase. Um, who was fight? Who was GB fighting? Was it a dwarf? Basically, yeah. whoever was fighting, I was like shield mark. Oh wait. Uh, do Laddie after, so because we do it. No, Treebeard. Treebeard fought first. No, Laddie did, didn't he? No, no. Because Treebeard then fluffed his rolls. Ba- basically, Kieran, Kieran boshed. Yeah, big Ma- time. Massive bosh. Yeah. So, out of the three they needed, they didn't kill this one Erebor warrior. Yeah. Who pushed uh, Treebeard? Oh no! Before we got into in our move phase, Dan had come over and go, oh, "Oh, this is the last turn, so by we, the way." So basically, we just moved. Yeah. And then we, we was get, looking to move this archer up the board yeah. the next turn to get off. And he went, oh, it's the last turn. And he went, oh, I'm going to hurl at that guy. So I went... So basically, Neat. this is one of those weird things when you... You need a, you need a pre... You need a when, warning. When you know it's the end of the game, you play differently than yeah. you would do if it's just you keep going. So yeah. Um, so basically, they made sure that I can hurl the elf into... Another elf. Then, therefore... Or, you, you, I think you could, but it would have had to have been... You would have had to roll a six. Yeah, something stupid. Yeah, it, it was like, I literally ran him as far away as possible because obviously last turn he couldn't get off. Mm. Um, and there was no point, because I knew it was three. I was like, I don't want to give you that chance to break this. Oh no. Oh no, we all knew it. We, we, we all thought, thought it was three. three at the time. <laughs> yeah, we all thought it was three. Um, so we didn't want to get broken and give away those points. Mm. Um, so I, I think I parried with my glaive. Yeah, and you but, kill him. But Radagast did what he should have done and killed him. And Radagast probably killed him. Radagast rolled a six. Uh, um, so, and and game. Yeah, and what we realised is if Kieran, when we actually counted, when we up, counted it up, if Kieran kills the Arab warrior, we would have won the game three one because he would have been broken. Yes, we would have. They would have broken us. They would have won three one. And instead, we won one nil. Yeah. Two and a half hours or how long it was to yeah. win one nil. Again, six models reconnoitered. Six models reconnoitered. We didn't get any models off. Yeah. Because yeah, every time a model got close, Radagast or Tree would get him and either throw him away or kill him. Yeah. Um, obviously, Thorin hadn't been wounded, and obviously, our plan was Gandalf. Mm. Um, you know, kill Gandalf and it, we win. Yeah. Because we get three for leader. Yeah. And yeah. even if you then break us, you'd only get we one. We could only draw. Yeah. Um, well, no, if you kill Gandalf, we won. Because oh, we, yeah. we would have had. But, Thor would have died somehow. <laughs> Thor would have died in that last turn, even though he was hiding in the house. So yeah, we won one nil. Probably shouldn't have been as tense as it was. Yeah, that was a really good game. Though. <laughs> it was, it was good fun as well because we played the practice game. We kind of, when we got back to the hotel, Mark was like, "So what do you reckon this arm? We should do this arm." It's like avoid stuff that hurls us. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from being hurled, and then we play you second game. Yeah. Um, so. So uh, unfortunately, I'm on two losses. You're on two losses, and we're on a win and a loss. So, um, in hindsight, in that game, we should have literally just spread, s- spread out there. because just, you could have, you couldn't have. I mean, I guess you could have gone the, the Bay on Gandalf, Ents, Radagast on Eagle, mm. um, and just tried to blast the nature's wrath and do stuff. Yeah, hurl. But I think one or two would have got through. Yeah. Um, that would be a case of where we probably would have needed to kill the fallen and break you. Yeah, but we didn't do that, so we was quite lucky in that respect. Yeah. Um, and then it was lunch. Or was it lunch before? Uh, it was lunch before. Actually. It was lunch before that, but because they hadn't told, because they hadn't told us at the last turn, our game ran, ran well over. So I, <laughs> I actually missed lunch. I'd like yeah. a Mars bar, so I was absolutely starving. Mm. Um, so then it was into the th- into the third game. Yeah. Do you want to go first? Yes. Who was I playing? Who was I playing? Um, you, Damien. Oh, I'm struggling to think now. What game? What? Um, uh, high ground. High grounds. Owen. Yeah. Yes, that was it. We played Owen and Nick Bramall, um, who often go to Slayer to play practice games. They had Rohan and Mirkwood. Very right, Nick. This army was based off an idea they had, wasn't it? Yeah. It was basically, Owen decided it would be really awesome. If everything had a throwing weapon. Yeah. And they're like, oh, it would be even more cool if, like, we have Gladriel 
Ben Grange or something. Galadriel and Radagast. Oh, Radagast. Radagast on foot. Galadriel, the um, Lady of Light. Yeah. Um, so the new one that has the auto six inch blinding light and the six inch minus one terror bubble. So, yeah, so I think the idea was Radagast makes everyone cause terror. And then the Galadriel, Galadriel stops people charging it and then they just continue. Throw throw weapons at you. And to be fair, it, it worked for a turn. Um, myself and Mark, we deployed on the Central Hill, which was because the Slayer Hills were all quite steep. We agreed to make, we quickly cut out a bit of paper. Yeah. And by the end of the game, it was full of insults. <laughs> um, that sore losers and this better of all. Glad you was mum as a insert swear word here. Rohan player. Yeah. Rohan suck. Um, yeah. We, you know, added, you know, added a bit of fun to the game. Um, so myself and Mark um, deployed on the hill. Um, just a line. A little bit of curve at the end. Um, Stormcrawler Thranduil in the middle. Um, Thranduil channels Aura of Dismay first turn, as does Radagast. Mm. Um, and I think it was their priority, and they were just off the hill. They were seven inches, seven inches back, so we couldn't charge them, but in threat weapon range. Must have been six inches back. No, what else? Um, but so the first turn, they unlaunch a barrage of throwing spears like I've never seen. All our Stormcaller, who dies. Literally everything they had, they shot into the Stormcaller because they were afraid of Nature's Wrath. And um, to be fair, rightly so, as we'll talk about in a minute. I think they had, they had a, Owen's elf half was very similar to mine. Yeah, because he had a Stormcaller with some Galadriel Court and Leggy, Leggy with Wood Elf Spears. They, they just fought Banjo for Galadriel. Basically. Yeah, yeah, and whereas. Did he have new work with? I don't think he had. No, he had, he had throwing had, weapons. Old yeah, had throwing weapons on and had more old work with. Um, so our bow, our bow fire was quite ineffective. I think Leggy auto hit the elf out because you know aim for something squishy. Um, and yeah, he literally threw everything at the stormcaller. I think he took a few wood elves down within the ways. Um, I mean, we're kind of going there. Mm, that's um, that's not good. I was still calling the turn one. Oh, balls. <laughs> uh, I'm noticing a trend here. Yeah, Stormcaller doesn't do a great deal. No. However, he didn't need to in this game. Um, so, second turn, they charge in, obviously, past a lot of courage tests. Um, and a lot of their heroes were kind of on this half of the board. Kind of on. So. If we're like this and they're like that, their heroes will kind of here. And Mark kind of just gives me a nudge like that and just goes, Thrandall should drop a Nature's Wrath like over in where those heroes are not. And we kind of looked and we had, you know, there was a lo double line of Rohan and Elves and no hero within six inches. I was like, you know what, that's a brilliant idea. So charge everyone in, obviously take courage tests. And then literally drop the best nature's wrath so far, uh, you know, I've ever done, and they're just kind of like, <laughs> swear <that> word, <laughs> whoops, um, should have seen that coming. So all these Rohan fall over, in go the Kazads and the Elves. Um, on this side, Dwalin has charged some uh, cavalry because they had some rise of Rohan. Um, Gladriel was Gladriel in combat? Yeah, it might be the next turn. They've got Urkham Brand in combat, and they basically looks like they're going to hurry up combat through. Um, but anyway, we knock over one half, and to kind of, to keep it flowing, we kind of go right. Everything left of Urkham Brand, Nick and Mark will do, and everything right of it, me and Owen will do. So you, you me and Owen, are just focusing on our roles. You know, I decide all the guys with axes are going to pierce and strike because they got nothing to lose because mm. all this because it was their priority first, all the spears are still on the floor, so I can't be struck. And I think I won all the fights and killed 90% of all the Rohan that were on the floor. Which obviously pierced and strike, two dice from him, uh, two dice from the elf. And then I look over, and where everything's, where all the Rohan was standing, there's just a gap, as Mark's, at, Mark's half of the army, <coughs> as he's just done the same. And then two turn, or in that one turn, we killed like 10 dudes. He took, killed 10 Rohan, you know, cut a, a swathe through them. Um, 
<laughs> and I kind of look over and go, Mark, what happened? He went, I don't know. And Nick's kind of there with a shell shot look in his face, and no one's there kind of going, um, well, that wasn't good. I think Erkenbrand had killed his um, his combat, and is it heroic? I don't know, but he, he basically, where Erkenbrand was, there's a little bit of a hole where he'd killed who he was fighting. Um, and Bar and then Barlin killed his guy. So there was a hole. Um, next turn, um, they were in priority, moving Stormcrawler up, Nature's Wrath. Yeah. Get it off. Um, did they, they rolled two dice, but they didn't get six, or did they? I can't remember if they got it one or back. two. They even got a six or later. Yeah. <laughs> but basically, they nature's wrath and we failed to resist it. Um, I'm not quite sure why. I imagine we didn't roll a six. Um, so, all our stuff falls down, but because it's their priority, all our spears basically stand up. So, they charge what they can into the front line of Kazads and Barlin. Galadriel charges a Kazad on the floor, obviously looking to her at combat. Um, Erkenbrand charges the spear behind, I think. Um, Dwalin was out of range of this nature's wrath, so he's still standing, kind of going, what's happened to all my dwarves? Um, but instead of them doing what we did, you know, instead of the reverse happening, Mark then proceeds to win every single fight with a Khazad on the floor and an Elven Glaive. And then not only does he win the fight, he then kills everything that had charged. Yeah. So two turns in a row, Mark's half butchers Rohan and Elves. Not quite sure how he did it. Um, I, he's not looking, and I look at him like, wait, all those Khazads are standing. He's like, Sam, we're fine. I'm like, well done, man. <laughs> well done. And again, you got the shell shot look. Um, glad you're for our combats and gets through into Leggy. Um, so she's standing on the hill being all scary. Mm -hmm. um, she is one tough. You think for defense three she'd go down. Mm -hmm. She is proper tough. Fight six, three attacks, three wounds, re rollable fate. Um, so she was on our hill the rest of that game. She didn't die. Even though I surrounded her with surrounded with legless wood elves. She just kept killing them all, you know, win the roll off and just push us back. Um, Thorin, who's off the hill, we can't. Mark kind of goes, right, we need to start pulling back just so we, you know, we can protect the hill. Um, Thorin and Dwan kind of out, you know, when well, well, I was like, let's just leave them out because they'll butcher troops by themselves. Um, and I kind of noticed that their leggy, who's their leader, is kind of just milling at the back taking pot shots. So I'm like, Mark, you charge that, that elf there. Her at combat into leggy. So he charges him in, her at combat into leggy. I think it doesn't kill him that turn, does a wound to him. Next turn, Dwalin charges in with Thorin yeah. into leggy and absolutely smash him. Um, and I think by this point Owen had already resigned to losing because we'd broken we'd killed 15 models in two turns mm. um, and he was kind of like so many matter of time but they were still good about it you know it was, it was a very enjoyable game um, they were broken so, but we were just going you know we had the hill so we basically just mopped up um, and it's a high ground one where it ends on 25% or oh, no it was it one or two after breaking, it's a one or no, twenty five percent. Twenty five percent. I think very quickly we mopped them up. Um, their Radagast died, which obviously made it easy to charge them. Um, one thing I did forget is that obviously we had bodyguard and yeah. all the Kazads. So all the Kazads were just getting in. Um, Galadriel refused to die the entire game. Um, in the end, I just kept surrounding her, and she was left on one wound, no fate. Um, Dwalin and Thorin hadn't been touched. Leggy was fine. He, Barlin was fine. He, I think he managed to kill Ark and Brand in the last turn. Yeah. Um, who did he? I think so, another one of our heroes might have helped him out. Um, but in all fairness, that Nature's Wrath and Friend will won us the game. Um, or certainly contributed because, you know. You don't want to give Mark all the credit. <laughs> well, no, but to be fair, I'm going to give Mark a lot of the credit yeah. because I was, fighting, yeah. I was fighting stuff on the floor but, and he was fighting all the stuff standing up and then when he got Nature's Wrath, 
He then killed. So actually, that game, I'm going to give Mark credit. I'll take it back. Trandall's next draft didn't win it. It helped, but Mark won that game. <laughs> um, because it was his his Thorin, his Dwarven who killed Legolas, and his Kazads that didn't die. Um, here was my Ponciels that failed to kill Galadriel. Um, yeah. So we won quite convincingly. So you're in... Two sure. wins, two wins and a loss after the end of the day one, which is, you know, we're very happy about because we didn't expect to be on that. Uh, Do you want another drink? Oh, okay. Right. Well, while you're talking, I'm going to go get another drink. Oh. So, yeah, um, our final game on the Saturday, we were playing, who did we play? Oh, yeah, we played the Scots. So, uh, yeah, it's quite funny about it. I'd never actually played David Reed at a tournament until this point. Uh, and it was kind of a thing that we'd always seem to be like tournaments sort of playing on the table next to each other yeah. and have similar finishing positions, but we never actually got around to playing each other. No, I like David Reed. I yeah. Chris. I've played him many times. Yeah. So we're playing Dave and Chris, and uh, they had a great company. Great company army, which looks cool and all that, but. As with any mass shooting army, it can be a bit annoying to play. Yeah. Um, but uh, they had Grey Company and basically B three hunters. So yeah, it was it was it was this it was a themed fluffy yeah. list, but it was horrible. Yeah. So they had um, twenty four mic points. Uh, they had twenty seven mic points plus a free one each time mm. for having Aragorn. Yeah. Which, as we found out, is horrific. Yes. Especially when you've only got six models. We'll find out in a bit. We have to play them as well. Yeah. Um, so they, it's high ground, so they just deployed everyone on the hill, basically, that they yeah. did. Like, nice line. Um, me and Kieran kind of deployed off the hill, so out of their charge range. Yeah. Um, and our plan originally was, because they had Aragorn in the middle, kind of, surrounded yeah. by people. A lot of range in the north there, Gimli there, and then Halbrad and some rangers up, yep. up there. Um, our plan was essentially we would jump on the air, on the flank uh, and, and hurl everyone down. Hold down the lines. Um, which would work a bit. Yes. So um, what happened in the end, we had mobilised Gimli who was on the end of the flank. Yeah. Uh, Radagast jumped onto Gimli, I think. And then an eagle jumped onto the guy next to the Gimli. Yeah. Uh, the Bjorn fell to turn into a bear first turn. That's not. That's never good. Which, which was annoying because it meant that they got a turn of shooting at him. Yeah. Luckily, they only did one wound. <laughs> um, the Ents. How did we bring one down? Oh yeah. Um, Gandalf ran on the flank and did a sorcerer's blast, which knocked down. The whole of the Rangers of the North and his twins. Yeah. So the tree bit on the ants charged into the twins and that. Um, and I, yeah, so that happened. So uh, the first turn is looking quite good for you. Yeah, it's sort of. You've like, got everything in combat and uh, there's a lot of stuff potentially going to be on the ground. Yeah. However, what we kind of didn't. Because uh, Algon was in the middle and surrounded by a whole of the guys, we didn't really think he was going to be involved in the combat. Yeah. What ended up happening was he was just in range of six inches to charge oh. the Great Eagle. Yeah. And then... What, so they kind of parted for him? Yeah, so they, <laughs> they moved and then... In, um, come, in comes Aragorn. And then Treebeard gets surrounded by a whole load of uh, their rangers, but we knew that and we were sort of like, he should live. He should, he should be all right. Uh, even if he needs to come back because he's... Turn say three yeah. wins, three fate. Yeah. Um, the other ones there so but what happens is the Great Eagle gets completely surrounded yep Treebeard gets completely surrounded yep the other end more or less gets surrounded <laughs> so it's gone from looking very good to yeah mm, slight concern at this point yeah yeah but we're thinking oh no it's fine because uh, we're just going to come back with Radagast yeah and everything will be much better yeah um, then he's like Oh, I'm going to call her come back with um, Aragorn. It's like, oh, that's fine, because now he can't strike, so the eagle can, like, just roll a six. Well, the eagle can, ju can yeah. just roll a six. Yeah, and uh, then they, like, call her Herc, uh, come back with one of the 
twins, I think, and come back with an aunt as well. Yeah. So the twin was on the floor. Yeah. But they called her a combat predominantly because it was surrounded and. Yeah. So, but um, I'm like, oh, we're still high fight back. This is all fine. Yeah. And then basically, what we kind of forgot was that he had about five angels of the north, <laughs> six angels, of the north, who like. So it was a weird combat where the one with Aragorn, Aragorn called, or oh, maybe an Aragorn called a Herc strike. Yeah. The angel of the north, north called a Herc strike, and. Um, but another one called a hurt combat yeah. and that was happening all the way down the line where it was just like three heroic actions being called and yeah. individual combats yeah. just to make sure they went high fight the lads yeah um, I think Treebid called a hurt strike as well yeah um, and we lost the role off to choose which hurt combat went first so I guess an Aragorn Aragorn went first or? yeah so Treebid's dead no not Treebid the Eagle dies e- Eagle's dead yeah Radagast is kind of surrounded. So Aragorn kills Great Eagle and then everything moves into Radagast. Uh, right. Uh, the Ent uh, loses the combat. Yeah. Because that was his other and dies. Right, okay, so that's the Great Eagle and the Ent down. Yeah. First turn of combat. And then they go and surround. <laughs> that means that they get even more people onto the tree bed. <laughs> um, I'm guessing they're high fighter at this point. Yeah, so tree bed. I think it's fight ten. At least I got to ten. I can't remember whether this is another one where Kieran Kieran rolled completely boshed it. (laughs) I think he's fight ten. Yeah. Um, but we lose the roll off, (sighs) and he he died that turn or next turn. But Treby basically died. Yeah. So so at the end of turn two, you've lost half your army. Well, we've got luckily Radagast. I think didn't die or won the combat. (laughs) Yeah. Um. I think he won the combat, so basically... Knocked everybody over. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so he, he basically just... He lived. He lived, which was the important part. Yeah. Everyone else did it. So we've just got Radagast. Bayon. Bayon, who just turned into a bear after everyone died. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, that was it. Actually, they jumped on Bjorn when he was a bear, like, turn two. Did they? Yeah, uh, I think. And also you love Gandalf. And left yeah, and Gandalf. So, uh, it, it, from what could have gone amazing in the sense that if our Ents and Tree Beard and uh, oh. Low Battery. Low Battery. Right, well, let me just get rid of that. If you finish this, yeah. we'll, 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 have, we'll, we'll make this part one. Once it's yeah. charged, we'll do a part two. So, yeah, basically, um, they... Filming for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> they were all... Uh, so, oh, what was I? So, Bjorn's a bear. Bjorn's a bear, Gandalf's alive. Van Eagle good. is alive-ish. And Radagast is alive, everyone else is dead. Yep. Um, and then we're all, there's kind of woods and that. Most of the army's there, which is the only saving grace. There's yeah. quite a lot of heroes. Um, Gandalf compels Aragorn away yep. from his army. Yep. Actually, I'm just going to get my battery. If you yeah. keep talking. Because I have a feeling it will run out while we're mid-sentence. Yeah, so... Um, uh, which, A, removes him. Uh, yeah from like hurting us and doing his free stuff and then Radagast jumps onto a random guy um, but where he won't be charged by many people and Bjorn charges Gimli and a whole load of other guys and stuff like that uh, next turn Radagast goes a hurt combat kills the guys he's with jumps onto Aragorn uh, who's also in combat I think with Gandalf and promptly kills Aragorn which made me very happy so we'd actually got their general kill and stopped them getting that three point every turn because they burned through I think by this point they only had like five or six might left which starting on 27 uh, it, in three turns to use up that much might is quite impressive Um Bjorn then wins the combat against Gimli and a whole other guys and stops uh, him dying. Oh, massive hand. Oh, uh, Hello. Um, so yeah, I think he does a wound or something on Gimli uh, yeah, or takes his fate off. So by the end of this turn, it went slightly better because Aragorn's dead. Oh, so and we still got, yeah. Yep. So what you miss is basically uh, compel Aragorn. Kill him. 
Heroic Combat with Hadagask, Johnson Paragon, Kill the Hourglass. Cool. Uh, and Bjorn just wins a combat against Gimli and wounds him. Yep. Next turn, uh, pretty much, Bjorn gets surrounded again. Yep. Gandalf is kind of hiding around the corner of sorts <laughs> uh, and immobilising the odd character. Yep. Radagast goes and counter charges Gimli. Radagast kills Gimli. Bjorn, I think, loses the combat but doesn't die. Yeah. Doesn't take a wound. Um, then, next turn, the twins are involved. <laughs> um, Radagast kills a twin. Oh, very cool. So, by the, in three turns, Radagast has killed Aragorn, Gimli, and a twin. That's a good kill count. Um, Bjorn kills some guys. Gandalf's doing stuff. Um, then, next few turns happen. We don't win as many combats. <laughs> Radagast is still killing people. Yeah. Um, Bjorn, I think, is taking quite a lot of wounds now. Because uh, the strength of on the range of the north makes a massive difference when yes. you're wounding. Yep. Defence 8. Gandalf, I think, gets stuck. And essentially starts... He's in combat now pretty much every turn. Yeah. Uh, so what eventually happens is Bjorn dies... And Gandalf dies, so the game's oh. over. Yeah. Um, Radagast, by this point, is still on full wounds, <laughs> and so is his great eagle. Yeah. Um, we lost the game horrifically. Yeah, I imagine they had probably a lot of dudes on the hill. Yeah, they. I think it was something like twenty-eight billion three. <laughs> um, uh, but we decided to keep going just to see how what Radagast would do. Yeah. Radagast uh, ends up. Killing Halbrad, every single one of the rangers of the north. Wow. And he's one off breaking their army before he dies. <laughs> That's impressive. So, yeah, it, it turns out I like Radagast. And Radagast Eagle. and Eagle is very good. Um, however, Ents are rubbish. Um, so, yeah, so we lost that game. So, unfortunately, day one, three out of three for losses. So you, you're on zero wins, three losses. It's okay, we can still win somehow. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that is the end of the first day. Um, so that's socialising. On, on to the Saturday evening socialising. Now, there was 24 people, um, and I think... Basically uh, Owen Wright got stitched up with... Yeah, well, to be fair, he, he normally does it yeah. anyway when we go into the mint. Because we didn't have a proper lunch time as such. Yeah, because we didn't have... A lot of us missed lunch because our game still overran. Um, so basically Owen asked me to go and see what people wanted and basically the options were going back to the Mint which the issue was because half of us had been to the co we, we'd literally been there the day before yeah. um, and as much as I like curry not two days in a row <clears throat> and I think that was a, a theme yeah. that a lot of people didn't want curry for repercussions the next day <laughs> um, so we decided to go to an Italian restaurant so I went round who wants to go I think it was 19 people in the end um, so we, we rang them up and was like, have you got space for 19 people? They went, oh no. We, we basically rang up every single... Every single restaurant in Mansfield. Which Mansfields, isn't an Indian. Which isn't an Indian. And they were like, no, sorry, too busy, can't take 19. And I was just like, oh, why am I doing this again? Mm. Um, so it kind of gets to the point of... Because people are still playing games. Uh, and we're really hungry. And we're really hungry. So I think kind of goes, should we just go Pizza Hut and get some food? So I think it was... Owen, so we, myself, Mark, we you split up into two groups of seven, really. Yeah, we. And I think um, Callum and Katrina decided that they were just going to head home, yeah. which obviously then reduced uh, to seventeen. Jamie was going back with James Bourne. Yeah, so people yeah. kind of, we kind of then just went in right, right, got to do your own thing. Um, which, as much as you know, it was kind of annoying because it's good to have a big group of people go out. It actually made it easier. Yeah. Because too. seven of us went to Pizza Hut, so it was myself, Mark, Owen. Yeah, um, Alistair Kieran and uh, Steve. Steve and Jay came with us as well, um, which is good because normally when we go out, I don't get to talk to them because they, you know, normally avoid you. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say that, but yeah. you know, so they came up with us and we went into Pizza Hut and we said, you know, there's seven of us. Can you sit seven, or alternatively, can you sit a four and a three? Okay, they got us a set table of seven, and they were went Not four and a three would be better. Um, but we'll, you know, we'll have a look for you. And the lovely lady came back and was like, "If you if you're happy to wait ten minutes, there's a, t a big table. They just wait for the 
pay the bill and then you can have that. Not a problem. Just don't tell me you sold out of pizza. Yeah. <laughs> um, thankfully they didn't. I mean, we had a, a lovely meal. Um, yeah. I know Damien and a few others went to a pub down the road. Yeah. Um, and then the plan was to go back to the 281 for some drinks. Yeah, um, but they had a wedding on. We won't go into the details of yeah, no, so there was a wedding. There was a wedding, no, and the was, 281 was rammed. Yeah, so we couldn't even up, get in. So we went to a pub up the road. Yeah. Um, I called it the Rustler, but I don't think it's called the Rustler. The, well, I don't know. It, it, it was basically like a Weatherspoons. Yeah. Um, massive, great big round table. Yeah. And, um, so uh, we, we went there. Um, we, David, we had, David Whitaker joined us because he lives in Nottingham mm. but couldn't attend the tournament, so he turned up. Uh, then an hour after. They said they were coming. Damien yeah. and his lot turned up and yeah. we had drinks there, which was yeah. really nice. Yeah, and so we were there. It's a big group of us, isn't it? It must have been 14. 40. Yeah, it was, it was I think everyone who then gone out yeah. their separate ways then converged Even on we didn't have pub. the big meal, we had a... We had a big social. Yeah. Owen introduced us to the Diarrhea Diarrhea song, which oh, was an yeah. experience in itself. Yeah. Um, uh, and yeah, basically just had a, you know... We just talked about hobby and stuff yeah again a lot of which can't be broadcast i mean that. most of it was that in the photo it was just, no just random it, yeah completely random when stuff. you go to a tournament be prepared to share your weirdest stories yeah. and yeah. how it start with this you talk about like the games game. and yeah. then somehow you just start talking about random stuff physics and random songs and yeah it's like how did we get there in like the space of it doesn't take long it's like one minute you're talking about the next minute you're talking about yeah you can be talking about what happened in your game and the next minute Owen's telling you how this school kid did something yeah. incre incredibly hilarious um, but that was very good fun I think in the end we went back to the 281 I know a few people went to the bar you didn't you? oh yeah so um, we called we, it we were, night. we were at the bar a whole lot of people disappeared upstairs well we we thought they were coming back down. They well, never came back down. <laughs> to be fair, because we'd been. To, uh, it was quite. It it was me, myself, Mark, and Kieran. Yeah. Um, because we we were we were quite tired, so me and Mark were like, we're just gonna go to bed. Key cards didn't work, and because they, <laughs> no, they didn't work. Um, and but because the wedding was kind of finishing when we got there, everyone was in the foyer. We kind of just thought, well, you know what, we'll give it five ten minutes. Mm. So we just went up to your room. I think with Kieran. And we just kind of chilled there for. What would people have been in my room at the 281? No idea. <laughs> so, anyway, we went up to Alice and Kieran's room. I think we played a few dice games. Yeah. And anyway, went down and got the key sorted and then went up to bed, um, which was good because the next game started at half nine. Yeah. Um, well, meanwhile, downstairs, there was me. There was Dave, a party going on. Yeah. This is where all the fun was at. There was me, Billy, uh, Chris, David. Yeah. And oh god, who was the other person? The person who joined us, I'm David sure. Whitaker. Yeah, David Whitaker. Um, uh, basically, just down there having a couple of drinks and that. Yeah. Um, and just talk. We went. We talked loads about the Hobbit films. Yeah. And what we'd do slightly differently and better. Yeah. Although we, it was weird. We were all there going, yeah, we really like all the films. But and this is what we had changed. This is a massive and procedures list. just to explain everything we thought was wrong with us. Um, but no, um, I heard that was quite, in essence, an early night, as in he was up until the early hours of the morning. Oh, yeah. So yeah, actually, to be with David, he didn't have a room at the hotel, so he had also to get a taxi back <laughs> at some point. Yeah. Which most of us kind of didn't right. really, yeah. Um, it got to one point, and then the Scots went up to bed. Yeah. Because uh, they were feeling tired. And then shortly after that, I can't remember who, one of us made a joke. And then for about the next hour, we just told every single joke that we knew under the sun. <laughs> Many of which can't be said. Yeah. Others which I'm not going to say because I don't think I can do them justice. But yep. Fair enough. next time you see Damien, ask him about the little green man. Yeah. Next time you see David, ask him about the black and white man. <laughs> and then I had a story about a blue man. <laughs> <laughs> I won't even ask. Yeah. Uh, Billy, to say the least, kind of, because we started doing a load of anti-jokes as well. Mm -hmm. So jokes which are funny because they're not funny. Yeah. But the issue... Yeah, was, I heard Billy didn't get... But Billy didn't did not understand funny. anything. No. Um, so after we exhausted every single possible joke, 
including one about a fridge. Actually, we had two jokes about fridges. Um, <laughs> I, I was lucky enough to hear this joke in the car, and it's. Oh no, you didn't hear my oh, joke about. Was it Damien's joke I heard? Yeah, that was Damien's joke. Yeah, was that the one that's what's white and doesn't climb a tree? Yeah. Yeah, fridge. It's a classic. Mm. Um, but no, my one's a bit too long to. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you went up to bed about um, three o'clock. Three o'clock. Um, so yeah, that's that's the end of day one. Yeah. Um, I think what we'll do, because this we've already been talking for an hour and fifteen. Yeah. We'll end it here. Um, we'll leave you in a little bit of suspense. I think we're gonna grab some. We're gonna get some lunch. I'm getting hungry. Um, maybe get a refill of tea. Um, and yeah, we will come back hopefully today, and um, maybe in a bit, and we will. Should I make this a separate video or should we just pause it and come back in a little while? No, this will be a separate video. Yeah. Day two will be a separate video. Um, otherwise, it'll take four hours to upload. So, yeah, end of day one. Me and Kieran are firmly bottom of the table. But actually, no, uh, I think you and Katrina and Callum. No, we were. Uh, oh, were you we firmly did, bottom? Yeah, yeah. But they'd also lost all They'd right? also lost all three. So, you, so just, so, you, just to pr so what we know at the end of day one. You're playing Callum and Katrina for the wooden spoon, in essence. Yeah. And we are playing David and Chris, the Scots, and it's Caesar Prize. You're still on a chance of winning we, the tournament if, as well. Yeah, if we win all three, we win the tournament. That's well, what you can't yeah. expect. Um, so anyway, we will end this here. Um, thank you for watching this half. Um, if you made it. If you've made it this far, well done. Yeah. yeah. Sorry if we've rambled and not made much sense. Um, maybe what we'll do, we'll now have a brainstorming session for this for the second part. Yeah. Remember so we can on. keep it into 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Well, we do a, next half we'll do a Tom Hansen, Jamie Giblin version. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah. Yeah. Win, loss. Win, loss, win. loss, loss. Yeah. Um, so thank, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you kind of enjoyed it and got a lot of painting done. Um, hopefully so, my models. Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe. Uh, we, we basically rip off the GBHL at this point. Okay. So don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Like us on Facebook. Like us on Facebook. Don't, fo don't, us follow, on don't follow us on Twitter because we don't have Twitter. Okay. Don't follow them on Twitter yet. Yep. Um, like uh, our blog. Oh, you've got a blog? Yeah, we do. Oh, so that's neat, that one. Yeah. Yeah, well that, we add that bit in. Yeah. And, uh, and happy strategy, battle gaming. See you later. <laughs>